This episode of Super Carlin Brothers is brought to you by EA. Hey, brother! Guys, Star Wars Battlefront 2 just dropped for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. And while it has an awesome and compelling campaign and story mode, and the multiplayer is excellent, it is also chock full of Easter eggs. And you guys know how much we love a good Easter egg hunt here, which is why we came here to the EA headquarters in Redwood, California to go behind the scenes with Star Wars Battlefront 2 and get some answers. Right out of the gate during the prologue while you're controlling the droid, you can overhear various rebels gossiping about Admiral Akbar, Lando Calrissian, and the events leading up to the Return of the Jedi. You can also catch a look at Aiden, the main protagonist of the game's prisoner profile, on the wall. Despite being thrown to his explosive death in Return of the Jedi, Emperor Palpatine finds at least one more way to carry out his plan after his death thanks to a communicator droid. We even got to meet him. And I have to say, the fact that they introduced these here can only mean there are even more out there. On Pilio, you play as Luke Skywalker and discover the Emperor's secret vault where you recover a compass. The ultimate purpose of the compass is not revealed, but of course, Luke is missing for most of The Force Awakens and everyone is searching for the map that leads to him, and here he is finding a compass, so uh, you do the math. Also, if it were me, maybe I would have looked around a little bit more. I mean, this is the Emperor's vault, Luke. Everything in there's gotta be somewhat devious, right? On the Vardos level, make sure you take notice of the Imperial propaganda on the walls. This was actually created by Aiden's mother. Ben and I actually got to interview Janina Gavankar, who played Aiden, and according to her, Aiden herself was literally the poster child for the Empire. So she is the literal poster child for the Empire. Along the way, you can also catch a lot of Arabesh on the walls. Arabesh, if you don't know, is the alphabetic language of Galactic Basic, aka English, the most common language in the galaxy. It might look like gibberish and nonsensical symbols, but you can actually translate it if you want. For example, this poster of Aiden's father translates to Verzio, Hero of Vardos. This is Aiden's name on the ribbon banner, and hilariously, this poster of Stormtroopers has a typo on it and says Stormtropper Core. Guess they have a bad aim on keyboards, too. Arabesh is not new to the Star Wars universe. Did you know that some of the letters can be translated on Rey's helmet in The Force Awakened? This one, in particular, translates to, believe it or not, Ray. This helmet belonged to a Dosmit Ray, an X-Wing fighter, and no, I'm not suggesting that Dosmit is Ray's mother. We're just suggesting that maybe Ray isn't her real name? You also happen to be recovering Gleb, another character from the novel, and although her role in the game is pretty minor, her backstory is pretty interesting. Gleb was the headmaster for the future Imperial leader's military prep school on Vardos, and it was her responsibility to teach young Imperial soldiers that allies are not friends, but merely colleagues. During the entire level of Naboo, which is of course Padme and the Emperor's old home world, you play as Princess Leia and carry out a mission during the middle of a battle depicted in the Shattered Empire comics. Takodana, the place where Maz's castle is located, is loaded with fun stuff. For one, you get to see Han Solo with a beard. <laughs> That's new. You can also go visit the door behind which we all know is Rey's future lightsaber, but you should definitely spend some time listening in on like every other conversation happening, all of which are an Easter egg in some form or another. For example, these guys mentioned the Sky Strike Academy, a school where the Empire trained pilots, including Wedge Antilles, before he defected to the Rebellion. There is actually an entire episode about just that in Star Wars Rebels. Another patron mentions Dejaric and Cubicod, two games seen throughout the galaxy in other media. Dejaric is the hollow chest type game aboard the Millennium Falcon, and Cubicod is a Mandalorian game involving a holographic cube and knives. Lando says, You have a bad feeling about this. A nod to the common Star Wars trope of, I got a bad feeling about this. And speaking of Lando, when you're on Bespin, you can witness the first canon appearance of Beldons. Beldons are native to the planet and use their long tendrils on their body to gather atmospheric plankton and chemicals, which they then convert to Tibana gas, which is a valuable commodity that forms the basis of the Bespin economy. Bespin is, of course, also the planet where the Cloud City is floating above, but on this occasion, you actually get to go to the surface where you can hear Aiden and the troopers reference Governor Adelhard and the Iron Blockade, both references to the novel Aftermath. 
Once you make your way to the Battle of Jakku, it's easy to get caught up in completing your mission, but make sure you spend some time to fly around the dogfight between assignments where you can overhear all kinds of fun conversations, including references to other famous X-Wing pilots like Wedge Antilles. Jakku is of course the planet we meet Rey on, and this battle is the reason that scavenging is such a big deal on the planet to begin with. In The Force Awakens, you get to see Kylo Ren attack Rey and Poe's mind, and in Battlefront, you actually get to see what he's doing when that happens. You travel through Dell's mind and actually get to visit Scarif where the final battle of Rogue One takes place. And finally, during the final confrontation between Dell and Hask, you find out that Aiden and Dell had an unknown daughter that the game conveniently doesn't reveal the identity of. Hmm, Ray's parents, anyone? Actually, you can see our full video about that theory by clicking the card. But there you go, that's every Easter egg we were able to find, but if you find more, be sure to let us know in the towel section down below. We'd also like to give a big shout out to EA for flying us out to California and giving us an early look at Star Wars Battlefront 2. We had a blast and can totally recommend the single player campaign mode. It is a really compelling story and often feels more like you're playing along inside of a movie movie than playing a video game with occasional cutscenes. But guys, thanks for watching. As always, please remember to leave a like on this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Star Wars action from us. If you would like to see who we think Rey's parents are, you can check out this video right here. Or if you'd like to see our predictions for The Last Jedi, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I'll see you in another life, brother.